This video is sponsored by Cake Wallet, the easiest open source wallet to store Bitcoin, Monero, and Litecoin securely on mobile and desktop devices. When buying, selling, and exchanging crypto or trading for gift cards, Cake Wallet ensures privacy and security, giving you the keys to your coins. Oh boy, oh boy, sound check please. Oh boy, oh boy, sound check please. Sound check, sound check please. Sound check. Sound check. check <laughs> All right, we're back. I don't know what happened. I guess uh, my computer updated last night and it messed up my audio. Apologies. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Daily Zest. I'm your host, Randy Hipper, here again on the lovely Thursday to talk Bitcoin, crypto, and the SEC moving to sue Uniswap. What is happening? I will break it all down for you. So if you're ready for the zest, the news, the education, make sure you smash the likes, subscribe to the channel, and share the stream out with friends so more people know what's going on here. I apologize uh, for the little glitchy poo that we had here. Welcome to the show, everyone. Hello, everyone on TikTok. Thank you for the love. I appreciate it. Oh, today's family review. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Guys, we're getting after it today. I'm so excited. And we have three amazing sponsors of the show, so you have to make sure you check them out. We have Cake Wallet, Market Cypher, 20% off with code Zesty. Carry the Zest, a crypto savings expert, where you can get 15% off your first month with code Zesty. And then you could get... Uh, 40% off the year with code having and then 15% off merch like my light behinds me with code 15 off and then we're going to work on some other stuff too um so guys thank you so much for coming i want to make sure we say good morning to everyone as again you are smashing the likes and subscribing we have a goal of 150 likes 150 live viewers and guys we have a goal of 16,175 subscribers so we have only 11 more so let's get after it um, is it having or happening? Is the happening ning 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 ning? That's what it is. Um, <laughs> good morning, everyone. We have Academy over here on YouTube. My girl Alexandra G. Cause she's just the best. She's just the best, and I appreciate her. We have Randy Black Hat, Emma. Good morning, everyone. Andy S. Drusified. Good morning, Oval. Good morning. We have M2. We have Crimson. <laughs> Squeaky, nice to see you. We have John Legend, David Bryan, and Yukio on X. Uh, Auto, cough, cough to you. We have J5, nice to see you. Welcome to the show. Um, who else we have in the chat? Uh, Mr. P. Salty Dog, good morning. Nice to see you. Uh, Crypto D, hope you're doing well. Crimson on X. Uh, we have, <laughs> uh, I have the sound back. We're good. I'm going to scroll past all the sound checks. Code X, nice to see you. Welcome to the show. Rewired, I met you. My friends at Williamsburg Pizza, nice to see ya. ASRE Footballer, nice to see you. He said, I just found you and I'm ready to learn. Well, welcome to the show. <laughs> if you guys are new to the channel, please make sure you let us know in the comments. Hi, JBZ. We have Douglas, nice to see ya. Jados, nice to see you. Hector on X. Code X on X. Gaz, Paper Planes. Uh, who else we have? I think I said hi to Joe. Aquarian, done napping. Nice to see you, Mr. Yi, Rob C, Sola Hefe. Good morning. All right. Hello, everyone. Hello, Mellow Fellow. Nice to see you. Um, Jim M, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We have James. Nice to see you. Oh, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Oh, shoot. Nino on X, Jesse, hello on X, Dark Crash. Oh, it's Sean, hello, I'm gonna sip some water in honor of Sean, good morning. Oh gosh. What's up, West? Nice to see you. All right, guys, we're gonna get into the stream. Again, YouTube does not like to share this out, so please make sure you're smashing the likes and subscribing, sharing this out with friends. It's so critical that you guys do share the stream and make sure you guys are engaging with the chat because that helps everyone um, and it shares out our stuff. Um, so nice to see everyone. We have good morning to you. Good morning, ASAP. 
everyone over there on TikTok. All right, so we're gonna get after it this morning and I'm very excited to talk some things. So let's just do it. So firstly, um, as people are flowing in, before we get into Uniswap, we'll cover some other things uh, before we get to that point. And that is one, Bitcoin. Bitcoin herself, she's trying to pump this morning. Um, we have 71.3, that's like a major resistance for Bitcoin. Um, and she was trying to test that this morning and didn't quite touch it, but it's kind of a little bit in the red as we can see right here, struggling to hold 70K, but staying over 69, I think is pretty cool. We have a lot of things, a lot of concerns in the space, and some of them include concerns about stable coins. And Cancer Fitzgerald is one of Tether's custodians. And a lot of people are kind of like a little shook about Tether. Do they like Tether? Do they not? I think Tether is one of the biggest movers in crypto in terms of adoption, especially bringing the dollar uh, to benefit this economy, but not only this economy, but boost hyper dollarization in general where people all over the world are constantly being devalued in their fiat currency where they could just have a wallet and have something like tether usdc or other stable coins so that way they can maintain their purchasing power and have control over their money unless they don't like you they don't like what they're doing then they will make sure they shut down your address. Nonetheless, we have Cantor Fitzgerald, again, Tether's custodian, saying stable coins are beneficial to the US economy. And he's kind of saying this based off of how we are going about regulation by enforcement in this country and the fact that no country's government likes stable coins because they're not the ones in control of them necessarily. Thank you, John, for subscribing to the channel. One of the long running debates in the crypto market is whether stable coins are going to strengthen the global dominance of the dollar. So we have Howard Lutnick, who is in charge of uh, Cantor Fitzgerald, who again uh, is Tether's custodian. And he said that the dollar, basically the digital dollar in terms of the stable coin is essential to America. He said, it matters to us, our economy. That's why I'm a fan of properly backed stables like Tether and Circle. He said fundamentals, and going back to the U.S. economy and stable coins, they're fundamental to the U.S. economy, driving demand for U.S. Treasury notes and do not pose a systemic risk to the world. He is a custodian for Tether Holdings, the issuer of USDT, and they have a market cap now of $107 billion. And he also said, which I find very interesting, being that he's in TradFi, that he's not a fan of CBDCs and said that China would view our CBDC as a potential American spy wallet. Now, what I like about what he said about this was, yeah, it is a spy wallet because all of these central banks, they work together. Let's not be stupid. Hong Kong and all these other countries that we're also in collaboration with, they're all tied together with CBDCs. And we know that CBDCs are going to be digital currencies that are issued from the Federal Reserve or a central bank directly to the American people. As Tom Emmer has even said himself, it is a CCP style surveillance tool. Cantor Fitzgerald guy, Howard Lutnick said, my fear is that the central banks would like to issue a CBDC, but the problem is, is what China will think and how they will define it as the American spy wallet. And that's probably the only good thing that these TradFi bros could ever say is that CBDCs are bad and it is bad because it literally hinders everything to the economy, freedom, innovation, and everything because they want to be in control of your entire life. And there's a really so a select group that wants to be in control of your life. And that is the Bank for International Settlements, which we know the ECB and every single country is basically involved with. And we know members of the ECB have sat down with people like Jerome Powell to discuss CBDCs and these things on public forums. CBDCs are absolutely horrible. Stable coins are kind of like right under that, but except that a lot more accessibility is given with stable coins versus CBDCs. And there's more financial inclusion with stables versus CBDCs. That's just absolutely tyrannical. The BIS, they're a group of unelected bureaucrats, central bankers, the Bank for International Settlements. They literally control 95% of the global economy. And I find really hypocritical that they're saying that unharmonized regulation with stable coins is a threat to its usability. Now, what I find really, like, really crazy about it, I guess I should say, is that they're saying that we need to urgently diversify, we need to be able to have all these diverse places regulate stable coins, and that we're posing a little bit of a risk, and that it's so urgent. Why are they saying this? Because they have their own agenda. 
Duh. All right, we have the BIS that found out that despite their promise, the use of stables is hindered by the international regulatory fragmentation. In 11 jurisdictions, they took this survey. The publication said the need for stables are urgent, the regulation for them. And most regulatory approaches are similar in the authorization of users, reserve requirements, AML measures. The differences in structuring the stablecoin issuances can cause them to be regulated under banking, securities, commodities, or payment system frameworks. There are also differences in the details of regulations, like redemption policies and things like that, such as algorithmic stablecoins. They're saying that this is no good, but they obviously are existent. They said differences appear to be largely driven by the variety of stablecoin design features, perceived risks associated with their issuance, and the nature of the issuing entity. And the resulting fragmentation may pose significant challenges for an integrated financial system. So they're basically saying that, oh, stable coins are bad because it all depends on the people, their balance sheet of the people that are issuing the stable coins. However, we do know that, of course, they want to be in control. They're the ones that want to issue the CBDC, not even a stable coin, which, again, it shows why they're kind of throwing some shade at stable coins versus trying to endorse them. And actually, it would be smart of them to endorse stable coins and say, hey, stable coins are so cool, and so are our CBDCs, and this is how similar they are. If they were smart, they would go that route. But they do the opposite because they want to scare you. That's it. But obviously, it's not going to work, and we're smarter than that on this channel. Because especially as countries are targeting stable coins, they're targeting CBDCs because they want CBDCs, they don't want stable coins. They also do not want privacy tokens, which I think is extremely predictable. Being that these countries, again, want to control your entire life. So why would they really allow people to have access to something that is private? And again, a lot of people are saying things like Monero are not good. But at the end of the day, shady things could definitely go on there. But privacy is a basic human right. So cash is obviously not tracked. Cash is obviously private. And we deserve to have private payments. So that's where I really do believe in things like Monero, Litecoin, MWeb, and things like that. However, I do see the dark side of how this technology could be used. Everyone deserves their freedom of picking that, though. Kraken is going to delist privacy tokens like Monero in Ireland and Belgium, which, again, I feel is predictable. Kraken said it's winding down its support for Monero in Belgium and Ireland. I know we have some Belgian friends, so please make sure you guys watch out for that. So the halt of trading and deposits for Monero will be on May 10th, and the exchange also said that they will fully delist Monero from its platform on June 10th, and if you have any remaining balance in Monero, it will be transferred to Bitcoin. So make sure you guys are being aware of that, and if you have the ability to take your Monero off of Kraken, if you're in Belgium or Ireland, I would take the chance to do that. Um, and always, that's why I always say take your crypto off of the exchange because you never know when things like this are going to happen. Literally, they're saying May 10th is when deposits and trading is going to be halted, and that's literally only a month from today. So if you guys are like taking a hiatus from crypto, right, and you're not looking at the news, then you miss these types of things. So that's why you always have to have your crypto off of the exchange. Very, very important. Pamp it. Guys, it is so dark outside today in New York. It's crazy. Hi, Super. Top of the morn to you too, friend. Thank you for the bracelet. Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I, everyone has their own agendas, including the SEC, where we have Gary Gensler being a complete... Hucksters, fraudsters, scam artists, Ponzi schemes. I ask myself... Every single day, why is Gary Gensler such a pleb? And that is why I put this poll in the chat. So make sure you guys answer that poll. Will Gary take out Uniswap? One option is the end of DeFi is here. Oh, or now nah, he's a pleb. Or Gary can't take out my love for Emma. So make sure you guys enter that poll. But I ask myself every day, why is Gary Gensler attacking crypto? Why are these entities always coming after crypto and the reason is is because it's complete price manipulation over and over again and i told you guys leading up especially to the having 
the ETH ETF, there will be pushback on Bitcoin, crypto, and DeFi. DeFi is something that they have been watching for years, but they don't do anything about it. It's the same thing like how Kraken, Binance, Coinbase, they all operated for years on end, yet no one said a word about them. Until now, until things get relevant, until institutions want their hands in it, until they want to mess with our market. We saw the SEC has done plenty of what you could say, not, not saying things for facts, price manipulation. We remember when the Bitcoin ETF was about to come out. We had three false alarms that the Bitcoin ETF was approved. One of them was from a publication, and two of them were from the SEC themselves. Fake tweets, apparent hacks, because... All of a sudden, the SEC and our government doesn't know how to use 2FA, which is honestly very, very sad. This is what I find just about the same thing in terms of price manipulation. The SEC sent a Wells notice to Uniswap, which means that they're not completely sued yet, but it's a move and to prepare them for imminent court cases. Now, we do know that, obviously, people from Uniswap spoke out, so we're going to We'll take a look at the inventor of Uniswap, his tweet, his name is Hayden, and the fact that they operate in the United States, specifically New York, where it's the worst state for crypto, shows you, you how much they are transparent and how they want to work here. Six dollars and one cent from Chadwick's Racing, preemptively fixing a 0.99 cent super chat. Well, thank you. Thank you, Chad. I appreciate that very much. Well, thank you. So we have Hayden from Uniswap. Again, they operate out of New York, which is the worst state possible for crypto. I live here. I can tell you that for a fact. And they are ready to fight. And they, I do believe that they probably have the money to do so. At the end of the day, their lawyer made a great point. So let's dive into the inventor of Uniswap, and then we'll dive into the more legal side of what they said. Here's the tweet. Bookmark mode. Let's retry that. Okay. Today, Uniswap received a Wells notice from the SEC. Not surprised, just annoyed, disappointed, and ready to fight. I'm confident that the products we offer are legal and that our work is on the right side of history. But it's been clear for a while that rather than working to create clear, informed rules, the SEC has decided to focus on attacking longtime good actors like Uniswap and Coinbase, all while letting bad actors like FTX slip by. They're saying that Uniswap, when he first set it up, the goal wasn't to reimagine finance. It was an experiment in a radically decentralized automated on-chain market. I didn't know if it would work or if anyone would use it. Fast forward to today, Uniswap has processed over two trillion in volume, which is why they want to attack them. They said the team at Uniswap did all of this in the US office from New York City. People often ask me why I stay in the US and the answer is simple. I believe that blockchain is incredibly powerful technology. Like the internet, it's here to stay. So someone needs to figure it out, and it might as well be us. And that you need to build technology that improves people's lives. The SEC's mission is, quote, protecting investors, maintaining fair, orderly, and efficient markets, and facilitating capital formation. This is a noble mission. I would argue that Uniswap does a far better job of this today than the SEC. That's a roast. I'm frustrated that the SEC seems to be more concerned with protecting opaque systems than protecting consumers. And we'll have to fight a U.S. government agency to protect our company and the industry. This will take years and may go to the Supreme Court. And the future of financial tech in our industry hangs in the balance. If we stand together, we can win. Now, from more legal side of things, this is from Marvin, and he is the chief legal officer at Uniswap. So we're going to put his tweet in bookmark mode as well. Today's Wells notice from Uniswap is disappointing, but not unexpected from the SEC. It's another abuse of power. Unsurprising from an SEC that last month a federal judge ruled committed a, quote, gross abuse of power by lying in court about a crypto project. In the Ripple case, judge ruled uh, that it didn't act out of a lawful allegiance to the law. The SEC has authority over securities, not any asset represented by a particular file format or technical standard. Most tokens are not securities, like Bitcoin, ETH, Stables, meme coins, nor generally are secondary market transactions per the Ripple opinion. 
The Uniswap protocol, the web app, and wallet do not meet the legal definitions of securities exchange or broker, which is true. Just weeks ago, in the judge the judge in the SEC versus Coinbase case dismissed the claim that crypto wallets were brokers, even if the tokens were issued as securities to begin with. A court in Risley has ruled the Uniswap protocol is mainly used for lawful purposes. The SEC's current exchange rule does not cover it. So the SEC proposed a new one, but we've explained that it would fail. If the SEC had authority over our self-custodial, non-intermediated products, it could tell us how to register them. It can't, and so it doesn't. It has provided no clarity and no guidance, as several SEC commissioners have stated in multiple dissents. They're saying that Uniswap does comply with the law and that they were welcome to sensible regulations for cryptocurrency. But the same thing stands. Why is there not a definition? What is a securities exchange? What is a securities broker? What is a digital asset in this space? We do not have definitions, which is why I say that this country is embarrassing. That why are we in a country that's supposed to lead innovation? It's supposed to be the leading country in the world. And we can't say, say what a digital asset is? And Uniswap was correct that Gary Gensler had those backdoor meetings with SBF. They hung out. They were boys. Yet FTX was able to just go on and implode until they couldn't hide it anymore and they got exposed. And even now, they're not being held accountable. Library utility token completely wiped out as a company because of the SEC. Why is this allowed to happen? This is regula regulation by enforcement, which we know does not work. The SEC obviously has a political agenda. They are not politically neutral because if they were, they wouldn't be siding with the administration. They would go and say, hey, this is what we feel. These are the facts. And we're going to decipher what this all means. Why are we having an open conversation? I even tweeted it yesterday. The fact that the SEC is attacking Uniswap, it shows how behind our country is and that we shouldn't be in court. We should be working together to see how we could all combine TradFi, DeFi, bridge the gap. Isn't that what the end goal is? Yes. But the fact is, this is like China, where in China, there are economies like crypto that they cannot control, so they do not allow it. The same thing is happening in the United States. We're very similar to them, more than we understand. This is price manipulation, because they know once they put out this announcement, Uniswap fell almost 17% following that Wells notice within an hour of Uniswap closing their receipt of the Wells notice, it dropped 10% from $11.21 to $9.97. That is complete manipulation of the market because if they obviously knew, just like the Bitcoin ETF, that it would affect price in one way or another when they put out something. The same thing is happening here. They knew the same thing when they put out the Wells notice for Binance's stablecoin. Issued by Paxos, said it was a security. Meanwhile, PayPal is using Paxos for their stablecoin. They never got labeled to security or got a Wells notice. Isn't that right? <laughs> yes. And it's all because these people care about their own money. They care about their own pocket. And if they really cared about America, they wanted people to make money in this country so we could all have wealth. They would work with Uniswap. They wouldn't go against them. It's obvious what's happening here. And it's obvious how corrupt our country is. Especially these anti-crypto bills like Liz Warren's. Who are they backed by? People like the American Bankers Association. Gary cares about his Goldman boys. He cares about his TradFi bros, and he's a paid actor. He knows that, he even said it in the past, that three quarters of the crypto market is commodities, cash, crypto, and it shouldn't even touch the court. This is a waste of taxpayer dollars, and it's a waste of time, and it's fun because they want to suppress Bitcoin price. They don't like that Bitcoin is at all-time highs right now. They don't like that people are taking part in a decentralized financial system where they are in control of their money. And there's a free market where they can't just halt a stock when it doesn't go the way of the hedge funds. It doesn't work like that. And even if they want to regulate the space, it's not going to happen. It's very cute, very adorable that they would like to try, but it's an utter delusion. 
They cannot take out code. It's impossible. Code is law and code is also free speech. And if they're not allowing Uniswap, they're not allowing decentralized finance. That means they don't allow you to make money. They don't allow you to make your own decisions. And they think we're incompetent. It's all about dollar dominance. That's what it's all about. They care about the dollar, which is dying anyway because they don't promote stable coins. They don't promote cryptocurrency. When if they just endorse cryptocurrency, oh, the US would be on top of the world once again. The US dollar would be even more powerful because of hyper dollarization that it brings uh, using stable coins. So I just, yeah, I just don't get it. Oh, Marcus Cypher, the, the bugs. I'm not eating the bugs. I'll pass on that. They're a little too crunchy for me, you know? It's a little too crunchy for me. Like a pickle. I know Gio's probably in here. Thank you to Gio for singing to me yesterday. Is he in here? I'll give him a little shout. I'll give him a little shout if he's in here. Um, but yeah, that was, yeah, that, I'm not eating the bugs. Would you guys eat bugs? Has anyone even eaten a bug? Would you eat a bug? Put a one or a yes emoji if you would eat a bug. And two or a no emoji if you would not. Would you eat a bug? I will not. I remember when they first started this bug BS. I was in, I was in, I remember I was in a candy shop, guys. I was literally in a, an, no, not a candy shop, an ice cream shop. So I was getting some ice cream. I wanted my birthday cake surprise out here. And I'm literally getting my ice cream. I look up on the counter and I see bug candy i'm like bro what is this what are they trying to make us eat that's disgusting i will not do it but i know sometimes it's a delicacy in other countries but i'm no no bugs get 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 out of here get out of here FBI, open up. i'm sorry okay gary i'm sorry i'll stop talking about you now okay i'm sorry um how many bugs do you think we've eaten while asleep? Oh my God, don't even bring that up, bro. Don't even do it. Don't even do that to me. I can't think about that. Uh, Crypto Slayer says his dog loves him. <laughs> he loves the bugs, I know. That's crazy. Uh, coin, they let Coinbase IPO, exactly. Listen, they make up things. Coinbase would not have an IPO. Coinbase would not be able to launch futures, have more institutional investment side of things on their platform as they have a case with the SEC. It would not be allowed to happen if they were such bad actors. But then again, they let uh, SBF do whatever he wanted. Mitch Ray eats bugs, that's, that's for sure. That's for sure. If, you, if anyone knows... Um, little Mitchell Ray, then you gotta remind him that he can't be doing this to you guys. And speaking of FTX, because we obviously know that S SBF and Gary Gensler, they were bros, they were both- Hucksters, fraudsters, scam artists. Together, and apparently SBF, we got his 25 years, probably will be out way sooner than that. And I was asking you guys, where is Caroline Ellison? Where is Dan Friedberg? And where is all the execs? Well, it seems that one of them, the former co-CEO, Ryan Salam, or Ryan Salam, Ryan Salamis, I don't know. I eat salamis. I like salami. I'm Italian, you know. Sentencing of the former FTX co-CEO is moved to May 28th. He was actually supposed to be sentenced May 1st, but it seems as though this is getting a little bit sus, if you know what I mean. And we're moving on out and delaying things as usual. Sentencing for the former FTX co-CEO Ryan has been rescheduled for May 28th, and he was one of the four of the top management peoples in the FTXs to be charged by the U.S. government along with SBF. And he also did not testify about against SBF, which Caroline Ellison and a few others did. All of the four execs reportedly made plea deals with the prosecutors, and he is apparently free right now on a $1 million bond. And he has pled guilty to federal charges, including the whole thing related to the FTX debacle. He faces charges on campaign finances connected to his girlfriend Michelle Bond's unsuccessful bid to represent New York's first district in the House of Representatives. Bond was defeated in the Republican primary. 
What I find so ironic about this whole situation is that SBF was the second largest donor to our current president, yet he got no campaign finance charges. Isn't that funny? He paid off the most powerful person in our country, and we're all good. He has no campaign financing. But he tried to get his, this guy tried to get his girlfriend in office, which is absolutely dirty. And he got the campaign financing. Why did SBF get let go on those charges? Is that a little bit sus? I think it's sus. Both of the charges could result in sentences up to five years in prison. SBS lawyers argued that he should not face the campaign finance uh, charges because they weren't part of his agreement for extradition from the Bahamas. Um, yeah, that was wild. Uh, he claimed, Ryan, though, what I find a little weird is that he claimed that he wasn't a part of the inner circle, yet he was doing all these campaign financing things. And word on the street is that my man's was physically sick oh my gosh i'm so sicky because i did so bad yeah that's what happens when you're corrupt that's what happens when you do bad things you go to jail and you get held accountable um and he obviously everyone associated with sbf knew what was going on with them and they just decided to keep on going because they were living the good life we do have more things speaking of bankrupt things like FTX. We also have Voyager. And if you guys are a part of Voyager, you had your monies on Voyager, take a look at this. Apparently, they secured $484 million for creditor repayments. Take a gander, take a gander. And these are through settlements, this $484 million through things like FTX, Three Hours Capital, and directors and office DNO insurance claims. And an April 9th filing showed that Voyager disclosed the majority of reclaimed funds, roughly $450 million, stem from the settlement from FTX. They filed for Chapter 11 in July 2022. And they also had some lawsuits against Voyager, like the CFTC and the FTC as well. This settlement, including interest, accounts for 25% of Voyager's aggregate claims and is anticipated to be dispersed shortly. In addition to the FTX agreement, they obtained a claim of approximately $675 million from its ongoing litigation from 3AC. And of this amount, $20.43 million represents their proportionate share of the initial distribution from 3 Hours Capital. Apparently, they're going to have uh, around 270,000 checks to write with totaling about $17 million uncashed. And the majority are valued at less than $25. So there were a lot of people that probably took their money off of Voyager and probably aren't getting a lot back anyway. Uh, but a lot of them were not even claimed, which I find very odd. But people sometimes don't care. They're like, get away from me. I don't want anything to do with Voyager anymore, even if that means getting my money back. So that's a lot. But it's okay. So if you guys are a part of Voyager, take a gander. Make sure you're looking out for everything going on with the bankruptcy. And then more uh, exchange news. We have Bitfinex. I think this is really, really important. Bitfinex is introducing El Salvador's first tokenized debt in order to fund a new Hilton hotel. Now, El Salvador has been going off the freaking walls, exploded. <laughs> in Bitcoin and crypto zest. They are really using and capitalizing on this technology as every country should. And the United States, again, should be embarrassed at the fact that El Salvador is so ahead and using this technology to their advantage. Obviously, having Bitcoin as legal tender, the first country to do so, absolutely stellar. And then you have the fact that they have Bitcoin-backed bonds. And their bonds in general are soaring. They're having passport programs to give passports to people that own Bitcoin, integrated in the tech space, pushing innovation. And now you have tokenized debt to fund a hotel. This is so freaking smart. On top of their Bitcoin mining, too. What I find interesting about this is that this will be issued, the token, on the Liquid Network, which is a Bitcoin layer two uh, or a side chain. So Bitfinex Securities, El Salvador's first registered and licensed digital asset provider, said it's introducing a tokenized debt issue to construct and develop a Hampton by Hilton hotel complex at their international airport. This token will be issued under the ticker HILSV 
and will be traded against Tether and the dollar. It will be issued on the Liquid Network, a Bitcoin sidechain, according to the press. The issuance comes as tokenization is ramping up, and El Salvador was, of course, the first country to introduce Bitcoin as legal tender. The issuance aims to raise $6.25 million and is offering a 10% coupon over five years. There is a minimum investment of $1,000, and the tokenized debt will be issued by Inversions LaGuardia S.A. DeCV. The construction project consists of 4,484 square meters across five levels with 80 rooms, a swimming pool, restaurants, commercial spaces. Hilton has not endorsed any offering and is only a franchiser that takes no responsibility, according to the press release. Hilton, if they were smart, if they were using their brains, they'd be like, we are hopping right on this tokenization. Because imagine how many other things they could build, real estate, and actually have people maybe own pieces of their hotels and fund them and give them a little bit of liquidity. I think that would be so smart. They should have NFTs, tokenized rooms, tokenized vacation stays tokenize even their day passes like if you want a day pass you're staying there for the day your flight got delayed let's tell it over to the hilton take a little bit of a swimmy swim give me that nft day pass so i could prove that i was there one and two it's just something that's easy it's convenient and i actually am in control of that asset that maybe i don't want this day pass anymore i go send it in to somebody else i sell it for a few dollars cheaper on the secondary market i think things like this are the future the future. I love that. So shout out to El Salvador for being smart. And I hope that Hilton ends up jumping on this and saying, hey, man, we're a fan of this. We want to be a part of it. But they're also very connected um, and probably the biggest hotel chain in, in the country, in the U.S. So I don't know. I think Hilton should get zesty out here, but I don't know if they're going to really claim this. Apparently, they don't claim it. They have no responsibility associated with this. Government smart. El Salvador moving on up. They're going to be probably the most, one of the most powerful countries in the world. They're continuing at this rate, especially because they want to combine with other countries. Naibu Kelly, he's a young boy. He's very smart, and I'm bullish on him. I'm bullish on him. He cleaned up that country real quick. Oh, you guys like swimmy swim. I like swimmy swim. I like to swimmy swim like, like, like this. Like, like you go in the pool, and you're just splashy, 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 you know? <laughs> I hope you guys touched water, took a shower today. Or take a shower at some point. That's, that's good. We always need to take showers. It's good to take showers. Uh, oh, this is what I find interesting, too. Dubai, right? They, they, they're pretty crypto-friendly in Dubai. They claim they're crypto-friendly. They're saying they want to lower the cost of compliance for small crypto firms, which, again, we don't even have ways for people to register in the United States. That still doesn't exist. And there's ways to register in Dubai, and they might give you a little bit of a discount on it. The head of Dubai's virtual assets regulator said he wants to lower the cost. He said there's a number of things he's looking for at the moment to make the regime and regulation fit for everybody. One of those is figuring out a way to deal with the cost of compliance. The rules set out that firms need to get authorized to operate in the company like Crypto.com, Darabit, and a lot of others. It said not many have the resources to be able to get regulated and something that we've seen. And they're looking at structures where we have a larger market participants hosting smaller ones for example. So I think that's pretty smart, and I think they should lower the cost. I think it should basically be almost free because of the sake of boosting your own economy in your country, but whatever. They all need to make their bread. It's all about the money. Pay us to register. Pay us taxes. Pay us all these things because we're the government. Woohoo! That's so fun. And South Africa. <coughs> oh, poop. Sorry, guys, I had a little bit of a mishap. Bruh. Oh, boy. We have South Africa, man, that's actually issuing crypto licenses. So South Africa is getting after it. Apparently, Luno um, is among the first recipients to be getting some authorization down there. They received a license from their South African regulator, becoming the first or one of the first crypto entities to be regulated by the country. And they started accepting licenses in June. So really hasn't been that long. And they promised hefty fines for companies that try to operate um, and that aren't doing the right thing there. 
but around 60 firms are expected to be approved by the regulator in the short term. So if you guys are in South Africa, I love South African accents. You guys have beautiful accents. You guys are going to get some cryptocurrency, and I hope everything really works out um, for you guys. But it seems as though some governments are a little bit upset. They're, well, 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 I'm upset about crypto. I'm a hypocrite. Like the BIS saying, oh, no, stablecoin bad, but we want to launch our own stablecoins, a.k.a. CBDCs that control your life. And the EU wants to do the same thing. Anything from the EU, I'm like, freaking bye. Oh, my God. Bye. But that's like majority of countries, majority of governments, because they're all tyrannical in one way or another. But the EU watchdog is trying to warn that a small number of crypto exchanges dominate crypto. I'm going to read this to you, and then I'm going to say and point out the obvious, the, oh, point out the obvious of why this is so hypocritical. So they're saying the European Securities and Mon Markets Authorities, the ESMA, that there's a highly concentrated nature of crypto trading and the potential risk it poses are greater and they have effects on the broader financial system. They're saying that the world's, uh, obviously MICA, the world's first extensive regulatory framework for crypto assets is coming out, that they're indicating 90% of crypto transactions are processed by just 10 exchanges, of course taking the shot at Binance because they're the largest and commanding half the market. They said it raises concerns being that if one falls, they might all collapse, which we did see a little bit um, with FTX where they were all kind of interconnected. They said the top 10 exchanges execute around 90% of total trading volume. And obviously Binance is the largest with 49% of the market. And they said this concentration has grown. Um, and the reports highlight that the Euro has limited presence in crypto trading despite the announcement of MICA regulation. However, they want enha to enhance investor protection. This is so wild because it's like they're saying, oh yeah, Crypto, like, we don't have much euro pairs with crypto. Obviously, that's because you're crazy and you don't allow people to operate. That's why, duh. Like, people are not going to do euro trading pairs if they can't get access to crypto in your country or in the euro area to begin with. MICA is completely tyrannical because they're trying to hide all these little things in there because they don't want you to have self-custody. They want smart contract kill switches. So if you create a smart contract and you do something that they don't like, they're going to want you to shut it off. And obviously that's not why we're here. That's not possible. And another delusion. The most obvious thing of this whole spiel here is that they're saying a small number of crypto exchanges dominate crypto, which is true. But why has that happened? It happens because of the regulation by enforcement and the global attack on cryptocurrency. If they let cryptocurrency prosper, you bet there would be a bunch of exchanges in every country. But because you have to rely on money and the funding to get you by to, find, to fight the legal battles, obviously there's not going to be a lot left. Which brings me to the double standard of the banks in crypto, being that they're saying a small number of crypto exchanges dominate the space. I kind of understand that. It's their fault, but I understand that. However, why don't we talk about the banks and how there's, even in this country, we see there's like t the top four banks that control all the other smaller banks. And when you look at the whole thing of it all, isn't it just a pyramid? Isn't it just one group of people that controls all the other people and basically all the banks have their, the major ones at least, have locations and branches in each country that they primarily dominate. Thank you. You're welcome. Come Thank on, you. guys. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Are the rumors true? Do you finally have a serious boyfriend? 0.02000000 LTC. No. Um, but yeah, I think it's hypocritical because there's a few banks that basically rule the world and the Bank for International Settlements, which is one group of unelected bureaucrat central bankers that control 95% of the world's economy. So who's really doing what? And obviously they run the world and they're going to try to come after crypto when it's completely hypocritical. Completely hypocritical, being that a few banks control the whole world and one group of people controls the whole world. So I'll say that goodbye. Also, make sure you guys are smashing the like, subscribing to the channel. We have a goal of 16,175. So we only have seven more subs until we get there. So pamp that up.
We're going to jump into the market recap. We're going to do some bubbles and things. So I hope you guys are ready for that because we do have some price predictions coming from some people that have been on this podcast. So let's take a gander. First, we have a little bit of a sea of green. It's kind of like, eh, it's like the sea of, eh, eh, eh. We have Uniswap that's obviously taking a poop today because of the SEC Wells notice. Again, price manipulation down 17%. NEO is up today. Little tau tau over here. BitGet is obviously uh, going up too. Some utility there. And um, all these things, VeChain is going up, which I haven't seen VeChain make a lot of moves lately. We have Bitcoin, man. Bitcoin again is 69.8 right now. We have the fact that Tim Draper, who was on this podcast and I have met before, a nice man, says that maybe $250,000 is in the card. He said, if I had to predict, maybe we could see 250000 by the end of the year. I mean, it's looking pretty good. And this is as he was reflecting on the having and a bunch of other things. We're trying to hold 70,000. We're at 70,000 right now, just broke below it. We have on the daily a green dot shooting that momentum up. The VWAP is going up. Money flows tight. Uh, we have the RSI that's kind of chopping it up, but in bullish areas. So I'm hoping that we move on up there. Um, Max, this is not a new account. This is the only account, my friend. Um, also, so we got to watch out for uh, 69K, our all-time high for 2021. Uh, and then bullishly, I really want to get past 71.5, but it seems like 71.3 is kind of a tiff right now. But that's really the levels I'm looking at there. And then we have Ethereum. That's $3,511. We were trying and we held on to this 35.30, closed there yesterday. But it seems like we're struggling to hold on. Neutrally 35.30, bearishly looking at that 32.30. Uh, we still have hope. We have the VWAP that's like slightly flat. Hopefully she picks up, but the momentum's moving. And the RSI is a little bit choppy, aiming bearish, but I'm having hope because of that uh, VWAP being over that zero line and the momentum still moving on up. But again, if the market keeps dipping, I, I would expect probably a dip here too on Ethereum. Also, we do have a Litecoin, which is like so freaking amazing. And I love Litecoin to my heart's content. And I hope you guys do too. Um, so Litecoin Summit, July 24th to the 25th in Nashville, Tennessee. $84 a ticket. Make sure you guys are there. Pretty please. So Litecoin, $95.16, down a percent and a half. We have a red dot that was printed here that's bringing the momentum down. The VWAP shot right below that zero line. Seems like she's coming back up pretty confidently. She continues on that wave. Hopefully, we see the money flow increase as well. The RSI is chopping at the bits at neutral. Kind of ah, technically bearish because right below that uh, 50 line. So I would hope that she picks up. But if not, if the RSI keeps lacking, everything keeps lacking, I would expect a dip probably down to 91 bucks. But bullishly, neutrally, I would like to close at 97. And then Doge is 19 cents. Go Doji. Thank so you. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. We You're are. welcome. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Could you bake some cookies for Emma, please? 0.0500000 LTC. Um, if she wants them, I she knows I'm not gonna tell her no. Uh, she knows I'm not gonna tell her no. So I, I, I mean, if she wants them, yeah. So we do have Doge's over 19 cents, down 4.3 percent, but had a nice run the past few days. We do have a fresh green dot, which is pretty interesting, despite the lack of zest here. We are moving that VWAP over the zero line. Money flow is okay. RSI is kind of, eh, but it's still technically bullish. So if she turns around, we have a lot of hope here. So I would like to see a, maybe a little bit of a cup and handle type thing work out. But I would look at 17 and a half cents bullishly, neutrally, close at 19, and then even more bullish, go to 20 cents. 20 cent doge. 20 cent. Go pump it up. You got to pump it up. Do we have any chartery requests? Do we have any chartery requests? Um, let's see. Let's see. Like when is the coin? Oh, JVZ, that's cute. Um, and Market Cypher, good morning to Randy Land. That's funny. Uh, Robert Geo will pump it up. Well, he's not here. He's not here. Um, seven more subs, not hard to find in NYC. Listen, Web3Me, we're trying to get the subscribers out here. We really want 16.2K. We're hoping for more subs. So pump it. Um, let's see. Do we have any chart requests? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. 
Oh, we do. We have things. We have things. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm getting flooded. Okay. Let's look at let's look at Solanzo. We'll look at Solanzo. Um, so Solana is $171.50. Just fell below that. Down a percent. Momentum is shooting down, but the VWAP is shooting up quite nicely. Uh, the money flow is lacking. RSI is lacking. So I would look at defending this 169. Um, and if not, obviously, like you, you could look probably at this 130, but that's like a dramatic drop. Um, but it, considering that the network doesn't really work, I wouldn't be surprised if people are trying to sell to get out of it to make sure they could actually have something that does function as a blockchain. Um, but yeah, so I would neutrally look for a 169 closing above it, bullish 192 or 191. Let's see. I also saw a bunch others in there. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, thank you. We You're it. welcome. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. You're a lovely sister, Randy. Well, 0. Well, thank 0. you. 0. Oh, 0. Thank you. LTC. Oh, Meninja, thank you. I see Matic in the chat. Let's look at Matic. Um, Emma Coin. That's so funny, Bionic. 86 and a half cent Matic. Matic is trying to hold on to that 86 and a half cent. So I would look at that. We're down 2.39%. Let me expand that line out. So we're very close at 200 day SMA, which makes me a little yeah. uncomfortable. Um, so neutrally close above that, at least at this 86 and a half cents. And then bearishly, you fail that 200 day SMA and come back down to 61 cents. But that's if things get dramatic. And maybe we could find support around around here where we were looking last time to find that support so i would just watch out for maybe 73 cents ish but that's if we fail the 200 day sma things go like absolutely wild um and and a little bit scary am i like when will yet absolutely not <laughs> absolutely not i wish i was though like if i could be a whale of anything besides bitcoin I, it would definitely be that um let's take a look at uh Ordy. Um, wait, is it the same ticker? I can't remember. Ordi swap. Is it different from Ordi? I think it is. Hold on. Or dis. Yes, 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 yes. I know what I know what I'm doing. Um, yeah, again, I can't tell you too much on this because again, like there's not too much zest um in history to base things off of. Um the only thing I could really point out is just trying to hold this at just over 18 cents, point one eight three five, and then defending lower 13 that's really all i could tell you you're basically in price discovery um hello jaja is in the chat hello matari hello welcome um who else is in the chat oh outcast hello chad uh chad wanted some dynex i think Yeah, Ordi is the ordinals and Ordis is the Ordi swap. I know what's going on here. Sometimes I get confused with the tickers. There's too many tickers, man. Um, okay, let's take a look. Okay, so Dynex is 69 cents right now. Cool number, but we're down 0.2%. Red Dot is bringing that momentum down. Money flow isn't great, but the VWAP is moving up. Um, and the RSI is freaking yikes, bro. Yeah. I mean, it's not too bad, but it's chopping it up in bearish, which usually isn't great. Um, so I would, especially because we failed the 200-day SMA, bullishly, you could go look at 77.5 cents, but bearishly, look at that 54.5. Do you know why some of these projects launch tokens? Because they feel like they want to, and they feel like they're needed. When I think, I think like it's a good example of like you know what we want tokens to look like um, on Bitcoin. So I, I'm all for the innovation and things. I'm all for the innovation. Hi, Slarty in the chat. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, LimeWire. I think that's too new. Right? Am I crazy? Yeah, I think LimeWire is kind of too new for me. Um, I mean. There's a few levels that I see that I could point out, but. Yeah, I would I would look at LimeWire. I mean, it's been around for a little bit. I mean, it's since May, it's not that long. So I would look at obviously where we've rejected and try to stabilize in the past, which is around 38 cents, around 39 cents. So I would look at that and then look at us maintaining at least 79 cents if we pull back and um, neutrally just holding a dollar 30 and testing all time highs after that. If we keep going in the bullish direction, but honestly, I don't have much on on that. 
Wads pay? Wads pay? Oh. All right. I hope I'm looking at the right thing. Well, I see it on Bittrex, so I guess I'll use that. I will use the Bittrex. Give me a moment. All right. I could point out these three levels. So WADS pay is just under three and a half cents. Well, and eh, not just under, it's a little bit under. 0 0.0329, down 2.6%. We're battling with that 200 day SMA. Obviously we saw we crossed it, we went up a little bit. But the thing is, man, like, I, I wanna see more zest. Uh, we, don't, we don't have too much zest, but the hope is that, that VWAT stays above the zero line, momentum keeps going. RSI is okay. I would just look at that 200 day SMA. It's very, very treacherous when you get around her. So bearishly look at failing that 200 day SMA going down to 0.026 cents. But also bullishly, if things start to pick up, VWAP picks up, money flow picks up, all these lovely things, we go and we retest 0.037 cents. That's, that's one to watch. ENA might be too new. We could take a look. Yeah, that's way too new for me. I, I apologize, my friend. Winston said, good morning from Newport Beach, California. That's beautiful. I wish I was in freaking California. Um, Caspa, I could take a look. I do not do price prediction. So do not take anything I say as financial advice or price prediction. I don't do that. I don't, none of that. Not me. Heck no. But uh, I do talk about levels on charts and levels to watch. I'm not telling you when, where, or how. I just, I just, you know. I just do. So we have a Caspo that's 14 cents down 0.72%. Volume is honestly lacking. You can see that within the money flow. Um, and we also have the VWAP that is moving up. Momentum is moving up. RSI is doing pretty good. Um, so I would, take a, I would take a gander at maintaining 0.137. And we see with these wicks that there's a lot of selling pressure here at just over 14 and a half cents. So I would look to test that eventually. And then you're basically at price discovery at 16. Um, Empire, no, I did not. No, I did not. Um, let's see, Quant, I see in my phone. Quant, Quanty Poo. Oh my God, what's happening? I have to check the chat. But I, I'm trying to find. No way. What is happening? Why can't I find this chart? Bruh. Oh, I'm angry. Oh my gosh, Andy S gave away five memberships. Andy, thank you so much. Oh boy, oh boy, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I appreciate that so very much. We love membership re guys. Please rain the membership re put the ring emojis. And say thank you to Andy. Everyone give a little beautiful emoji in the chat if you are a member. I am freaking devastated right now. What the actual poop face like is going on right now? All right, well, I'm gonna have to deal. I'm gonna have to deal. Give me a second. This is, this is freaking ridiculous. This is freaking ridiculous. All right, let's clone. I know where my freaking targets were too. This is my angry face, guys. The freak. Okay, let's see. Going down, down, and a million around. Shorty, we going down, swinging. I know it's not Shorty in the song. I'm just saying she's a shorty. Okay, let's see what's going on here. So we do have a quant. I have to re freaking map my whole life now. All right, so take a look at this. We have Quant that's battling the 200-day SMA. It's not the only coin that we've seen today battling the 200-day SMA. We got 114 bucks down 2.22%. Looking at that VWAP, it is trying to shoot back up, but the momentum is kind of like, being like, nah, man, we're gonna go the opposite way, red dot. And the RSI is meh. Uh, money flow is obviously meh. You could see that the volume is nowhere near what it was. So I would look at 
Obviously, we know that there was a defense off the 200-day SMA and at 17, 117. So bullishly, I would look at 117, bearishly failing the 200-day SMA and going to 100 bucks. And that's psychological. As you could see, uh, when whenever we approached 100 bucks, it was always a, a little bit of a tiff. And then we maintained support and we had some decent price action. Uh, let's see. All right. Hi, everyone in the chat. Uh, we're having an X battle. What? A, oh, an X heart battle. Oh, my gosh. You guys are so funny. The, I love that stuff. I love that stuff, man. Uh, hello, Caesar. Nice to see you. Um, who else again? I say hi to? Warlocked is in the chat. Gary Littlemore. Um, all right. Tim Taylor, what's up? Tim Taylor, I, all I see is the please comment. I don't see... Um, a request from you here. Oh, I did Quan. I did Quan. I see that. That was your request. Okay, I did that. Hi, Crypto Kurt. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I see a Cardano request in here. Okay. Oval said, it's okay. You can say hi to me again. Hi, Oval. Hi, Oval. All right, let's see. Uh, what, what time is it? Are we crazy overtime? No, it's fine. Um, let's go to Cardano. So, Cardano. I was looking at some, I was like trying to figure out what pattern this was so I could just delete that. Um, I was looking at 57 cents holding that bullishly, uh, 64. But yeah, just holding the 17 and a half I feel like is important. There's a lot of defense there. But yeah. I'm excited, guys. This is going to be really freaking awesome. I'm very bullish on everything. I'm bullish on everybody. Um, I also want to make sure you guys are smashing the likes and subscribing to the channel. Please do that. Please make sure you like, subscribe. Why don't you like? Oh, gosh, guys. This is, like, so awesome. We have such a fire show, man. How many likes do we have? Are we, are we liking things right now? Are we liking things? Guys, smash these likes. What is happening right now? Pamp it. Yeah, guys, I, I'm not worried about the SEC. I see some comments about that in the chat. I'm not worried about the SEC. Um, I'm not worried about them ever because they always end up losing their court cases and they just like to have judges regulate the space instead of them regulating the space, which is... um. Typical, um, as these politicians don't want to do anything and they don't want to actually do work and they don't want to do something that actually innovates America and all these things. So, yeah, I just I just think that we should always keep calm, hodl on. Obviously, we see today that more exchanges are having issues, especially with certain coins internationally. So especially if you're holding privacy coins, you have to take self-custody of those. You never know when they're going to get rugged from the exchanges. Always make sure you have your crypto off of the exchange. Make sure you're being your own bank. Go back to the fundamentals of the space so we could get after it. Um, I have a bunch of things to do today and a very busy day as always. I love being busy in things. So I'm going to get after it. So if you haven't yet, please make sure you smash the like, subscribe, and you share this stream out with friends because we have so much going on and I want to keep getting bullish. I want to keep getting after it with you guys. So if you guys keep sharing the stream out, you engage with the stream, then more people will be able to get the message and feel all the love and the zest and just pamp it. With us. So thank you guys. I appreciate every single one of you. Again, if you haven't yet, make sure you guys smash the like, subscribe, share the stream out with friends so we can get after it. I will see you guys tomorrow at 9.45 a.m. Eastern. And it's going to be Friday. I'm so excited. I can't believe it. This week flew by. And it's because you guys are so amazing. So thank you so much. I'll see you guys later. Smash the like, subscribe, share. And as always, stay zesty. Peace. <laughs>